past century is probably <laughs> used. Everything else is very much, uh, it, you know, the, the tools that I use are the pencil and the paper to develop it. The shoemaker's last, which is the, the, the form the shoe is made on. Uh, and I, I was walking around in the, in the museum earlier and the tools that are on display are exactly the tools you'd see in my shop. So really, I, I know there are a lot of people who can use CAD to develop. I find, personally, uh, Stealing things from a museum is better? Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I find it's such a tactile process that right from the beginning, just having hands on the paper, just sketching, figuring things out, handling the last, uh, I find too far, things too far removed if I use anything that's really modern technology. So much of what we do in theater tends to be so specific and such one-offs that even if you're doing a chorus of you know, 20 men for an opera all wearing a 19th century riding boot, each person will be addressed. I'll go through the measurements of each person. Uh, if I can meet the people prior to, it's even better because you know what, the, uh, what their foot problems are. Feet are really sensitive and funny things, so what Person A needs, person B doesn't, but they need something completely different, and person C needs something completely different as well. So oftentimes, you'll be making things look the same, but each thing, each person will have something completely custom done. So as a result, this person with very wide feet wearing a wingtip that's supposed to look like this person with really narrow feet, you're actually modifying the pattern so that when these two shoes are side by side, you're mentally not noticing a difference between them. So. I just find what I, what I do is way too, uh, way too specific. And it also helps me to kind of get in the head, because like I say, a lot of the process is figuring out the problems before the problems. I find by actually taking the time and doing the hands-on work, it really gives you the opportunity to get inside a person's, a person's head, see what they're gonna be doing, and uh, also giving each person kind of the time they deserve as well, just saying, okay, this person's got to do something different, or this person is short and wants to be taller, or whatever. It's just the opportunity to address each pair of shoes as something specifically done for this person. No problem. Hey, can you hear in the back? Do you need, okay, so we won't repeat the questions. The issue of uh, cost has come up several times. How expensive can these custom jobs be? Uh, you know, very, because... <laughs> The, the, the process of shoemaking, and again, since everything tends to be a one-off, the whole process is done by hand. You know, the, the, you'll be using industrial sewing machines to sew, but everything's cut out by hand. It's still somebody sewing each piece on a sewing machine, putting in every eyelet, uh, the drafting, everything. So a finished pair of shoes can take anywhere between, you know, some, if you're lucky, 12 hours and I just finished a pair of shoes that took me literally three solid weeks of work where I worked on nothing else but these shoes. So, you know, you figure on average uh, a one-off pair of shoes, probably 15 to 20 hours. Everyone likes to make a decent hourly wage. <laughs> so when you deal with that and expensive materials such as leather or synthetics, uh, you're often looking at something that costs at least a few hundred dollars to, to make beginning to end. Show them your shoes. Oh, she asked me to show them my shoes. shoes. I, I made these. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> but yeah, depending on what's required, you're often looking at things that are costing at least you know a few hundred dollars a piece just because of the amount of time. But it, you know that being said, often people are amazed when you look into like a full, co full costumes can cost ridiculous amounts of money because you have to figure everything is being built from nothing, from scratch. So everything needs to be developed. The, the mock-ups need to be made for fittings. The material has to be bought. Often the material has to be painted, dyed, whatever. So, you know, costumes themselves can be tens of thousands of dollars for the whole process because they're often hundreds and hundreds of hours of work and you know, any given costume could have 20 people working on it. When you and I think it depends on where you're working as well. Because as a designer, I can go into a tiny little 
Cedar Company, and I will take one brain with me, and I can go into Stratford, and I will take another brain with me, because the resources of those companies are very different. Um, the expectation is different as well, but as a designer, you know, I feel so boring sometimes, because one of the first questions I ask is, you know, if I get a call from a particular company, I know the scale of that company to begin with, and then I'll say, okay, what's the budget? Because that'll tell me a great deal about how I proceed forward. And, and to me, it's not a question, it, there's never enough money. Um, 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I worked in the design office of the Metropolitan Opera in New York, and then a new production for them cost $3 million, and that wasn't enough money there. So the basic assumption in my world, in my mind, is there's never enough money. So just tell me what it is. Like, get, let me know what the resources are. And then the real challenge is how do we work to make the best use of our available resources? So that, for instance, I may be working on a show where I don't have a, a big costume budget, but if it's really important, to say, I use Sleuth as an example again because you can't really go buy big clown shoes. Like you've got to deal with that issue. So you've got to say, where else can I scrimp to put the money to pay the person who will be able to solve that particular problem because that's a core element. So what I might do is say, okay, I can cheat on, on these other things. So I'll have the money to put towards the footwear that is, a, is, a, is not negotiable really. Okay. I'm fortunate enough to uh, be able to do footwear for a lot of different scales of theater as well. And as a result, you know, uh, often I don't get to do local shows. And, you know, I love doing Toronto theater, especially the smaller houses. That's where I started in theater. And being able to do shoes for shows like that is really important to me. And so often I will kind of, you know, Un undercut a usual price if it's a show that means something to me because other shows will somewhat make a difference uh, as far as costing goes. You know, don't tell anyone. But that that'll often be the case too. And as well, uh, if you know I'm doing a show at the Tarragon or something like that, which doesn't necessarily have the same budget as a Cirque du Soleil show. You can go in and sit down and say, yeah, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and you can actually sit down and say, okay, uh, this is how much you have. What can we do to make it work? Rather than, I hate being discounted by somebody saying, no, we can't have the shoes made because we can't afford them. But, you know, there are always tricks. There are always ways to make something much simpler. And uh, that, that's one thing I really loved about working at Stratford Festival, the ingenious ways you figure out to make things work. And uh, often it's taking some, you, you'd be amazed if you saw what was inside some of the shoes there, where you're taking running shoes and making them look like 16th century tongue and ties. And uh, I, I do enjoy that challenge. I don't do so much of that anymore. Most of what I do is from scratch, but there are ways to make, to make things work without kind of to suit budgets, I suppose. <laughs> and the shoes aren't always scrap from, built from scratch or new, right? Like sometimes they'll come from stock, is that right? Yeah, depending yeah. on the type of show. Often with the highly physical shows, uh, not. Right. Usually it needs to be something new. Um, but yeah, for a lot of repertory theaters, they'll use I mean, if, stock you know, shoes. if you have a good stock of shoes, you're in a very fortunate position because they do wear out. They do get used a lot. And, and uh, space is always, a storage space is always a problem for theater companies. So to be able to have a well-organized shoe stock, it, it can sort of be a huge bonus to save you a lot of money if you can sort of pull shoes out of stock and they, you've got enough ranges of sizes of those men's nice dress business shoes <laughs> so that you know you can, you can use them over again. And if they're well taken care of, then it's a really good investment. But, like, have you ever worn the same pair of shoes in different place? Yes. Yeah, yeah? So they'll, you'll say, so, 
those, those are good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or would you ever say that, like, well, Theatre Calgary has a pair of shoes that yeah. we used last year and they fit and yeah. all that kind of stuff? Yeah. And at the Shaw Festival, for instance, I mean, because they use a company of actors and it's the same actors, right. a lot of the same core actors from year to year, they will have sort of an entire uh, kind of wardrobe of clothes that are made for that particular actor. So they will build up the stock for that actor uh, every time they do a show. Those clothes are not put into the sort of general costume storage. They're in, you know, Robert Benson's costume section because they know that then they can come back uh, from year to year and they know, well, there'll be, you know, pairs of period pants that fit him or footwear that fits him that he likes, you know, and stuff like that. So. And, and designers do, we, we call it pulling, right? We'll say, well, let, let's see what we can have Sean pull from Stratford or, or she's going to go down to Shaw and see if she can pull any shoes there or vests there or, or whatever. But, but you, and you talked about saving money, which is absolutely true. But another resource that is uh, not, that we don't have enough of ever is time. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're talking about a, a, a period show, we need a certain look of shoe that even if it's only been faked by, by like buying something odd that work for a designer. If you if you hang on to those sorts mm -hmm. of things, they'll really get you out of a jam. If you if you boots, meet that period boots. again, yeah, men's boots, riding boots, that sort of thing. Yeah. You'd be foolish to get rid of those if you were running a wardrobe. Yeah. But then you need storage space. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's a, Just you know. You know, you don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars renting a storage space so you can save $50 on a pair of shoes. Well, it, you know, so. it's, it's, I think that it's, it becomes the responsibility of the companies 